I'm in my room, so I'm not as aesthetically pleasing as you are. No one, no one cares. Like literally, no one cares. I promise you, no one watches this. Like you watch, two of my cousins watch. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. A, a, a few people listen, but watching it on YouTube, I don't think it's many. Um, but see, I have the video when I listen to you on Spotify. The video is on Spotify. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never I seen upload that the video. Yeah, but oh, I was like, people, a lot of people tell me that they drive, so they're not oh. watching. Is is like it might be on their screen, but they're. Not, I hope they're not watching. Can you imagine them driving, <laughs> watching us talk. Oh my god! Love it. So, Megan, thanks for joining me on Chicklet. This is your second time on, on Chicklet. My wow. second appearance. <laughs> I know. Thanks for I love me. that so fun um let's tell the people how we like know each other a little bit we don't need to like do everything what do you say when people when when you talk about me what do you say I say that we went to school together from kindergarten through you know k through 12 yeah but that we recently I guess reconnected via social media and through our love of books and like have grown into a friendship so I think this I always say like oh well we went to school together we knew each other but I feel like now it's more important that I'm like well we reconnected and now we're like building a new friendship right right that's literally exactly what I what I say too so yep agree there (laughs) how are you feeling do you need anything we have I have time the minimum that I need for YouTube is 20 minutes so I know you said you have like a half hour ish so yeah if you need to do something, like go to get a drink of water or go to the bathroom, feel free. I just need that good. 20 minutes. Okay. I good. am good. Amazing. Perfect. So let's talk uh let's talk a little bit about Queenie. Do you remember the book? Because I know it's been a while since you since you read it. It's been a while since I've read it, but I do I remember like parts of it. Um yeah. so we can certainly I was thinking about it a lot today in preparation for our conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you gave me the book. Was it when we did that book swap? Yes, it was like the mystery, like we hid the covers and we gave everybody their books. Yeah, Yeah. and like we got Queen. We wrote on it, we wrote on it like the, like a one sentence synopsis, right? And like our rating of it. And there was something else, right? Or no, I don't remember. I think it was like genre. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. Right. So we did that. And then we did the book swap in our in our book club back in New Jersey. And you gave me Queenie. And I, it's funny because I read my review from when I first read it after reading it the second time in preparation for this book review now. And my perception of the book is very different from two years ago when I read it, because I think I read it two years ago. Because two years ago, I was so frustrated and annoyed. And I was like, she's like, ridiculous but then now I'm like she was like a victim of everything I feel like she had a really hard life yeah no I remember so I remember because I gave it five stars like I thought it was great I just remember feeling like you feel so many different emotions throughout the book or at least I did and I remember when you read it the first time we I remember you sharing I don't remember even what you shared but I just remember it not being like I think I had high expectations for you to be like, oh, it was great. And I feel like you didn't have that re- reaction. So I was just like, oh, no, like I gave her a book that like didn't live up to the hype. So I'm glad that you read it again. And I'm like kind of glad to hear that you feel differently about it. So I just I that's interesting that you were able to like read what you felt before and then what you felt now. But I think I was always really called to the book because I liked the female friendships in the book. I find that I'm drawn to books that have like a really solid friendship base and I just feel like poor Queenie I just feel like I identified with her because I feel like we always we all of us have maybe gone through that phase in our life where we're like engaging with people that we shouldn't or you know trying to find our self self self-worth through other people so I feel like it was a very emotional journey in that sense 100% and like I was really I felt bad for her now reading it that she, you know, her her dad wanted nothing to do with her because he had a second family. So that alone is, like, resonates with me, right? <laughs> but it's, like, hard for a person to, like, become secure and happy and healthy when, like, one of the, the people, one of their parents, like, wants nothing to do with them. That alone is hard. But then she has her mom who gets into that, um, you know, they had a really great re- relationship. They were, like, best friends. It was, like, 
you know, they were, it was the two of them against the world type thing. But then she starts to date this guy who starts to emotionally, and I think sometimes physically abusing her mom and emotionally abuses like Queenie too. So like on top of that, she like loses her mom to this relationship and this man is mistreating her. And like, we find out that when she was like 10 or 11, her mom had an apartment just for Queenie alone to get her away from this guy because this guy wanted nothing to do with her. So like she has been like, that's abuse. Like it's, it was a very heavy book and the way that she talks about these things, she doesn't like give herself the space to like have that trauma. Like she kind of is just like, you know, when you go through things, you think like everyone goes through it and it's like normal to you. And it's like, it's not normal. It's not, (laughs) she like under, underviewed it i don't know not that's not the right way but you know like i bet she downplayed it downplayed it exactly exactly and i was really frustrated at that but it was sad like i feel so bad for her and then now she's you know in england she's working at the the newspaper as like a culture writer and she tries to write about the me too movement and like politics and stuff and he's like no why don't you just write about dresses and so like She's minimized then, and then with Tom, like you're saying, she's trying to find her worth through him, but and he seems great, but then because she's a black woman, I think he even said at one point, he's like, I love you because, like, of who you are, like, has nothing to do with you being black, and I feel like that's a really common, like, misconception, where it's like, if you don't see, like, black people, like, through their blackness, then you're not seeing them. And he didn't see her. And it was just like, I felt like the whole thing was so heartbreaking. And I think that's as women, right? Like, I think there's so many different experiences, whether it's romantic or employers. And I think, I think it resonates more. Like the black experience is going to resonate more than a white lived experience. But I think as women, I felt like the writer did a good job kind of making this a woman's story and yes it was really sad but I also think that like I think that there are a lot of moments in women's lives that are sad and I think that's why it kind of was like this weird like awakening moment and I think like her friendship that she builds with the friend at the paper I think was just like kind of cathartic to see that like her friend was going to be there through everything like there were just moments where I feel like Queenie would try to push her away and I feel like she just kept coming back to like no I'm like I'm actually here for you. So it just was kind of that very sappy moment at the end for me to just be like, okay, like it is, you know, sometimes like your friends really do get your, get you through. And like you said, like, there's just a lot of trauma. Like that whole book was just like traumatic for her. And I think that's just why it was hard to figure Like my emotions were all over the place. Cause it like, then at one point, I believe she talks about like the, I think she was sexually abused. Like there's I think that she shared about that at some point that there was like some with level. a guy that she was sleeping with. Yeah, I yeah, think, I think a couple right? times. I think there were a couple guys because there was one point where you know her and Tom went on a break, or like she thought that they were on a break, but turns out they were really broken up. But she just like yes. he didn't communicate it well, and she was still stuck to him that she didn't really see what was actually going on. You know, it had been months of him not talking to her, so she's sleeping around, sleeping around to like you know fill that void or whatever and there's a few guys and I think there was a couple of times where she's sleeping with guys and she you know was saying no but they like do it anyways or yeah. like they do like certain sexual acts that she maybe she didn't say no to but she didn't say yes to it like right. they just like took the liberty to like do what they wanted and She doesn't even, she has to keep going to the doctor's office because she needs to take medicine or get tested for like STDs and stuff. And because she just doesn't even know like how many guys, she can't even keep track of the guys and they're not using condoms and like she might be pregnant and like STDs and like guys that are married or guys that she didn't even know that were married, like dirt bags of one guy with the car. It was just so messy. (laughs) And, like, I hear what you're saying with, like, Darcy, but I don't remember that, like, sappy moment that you said at the end. Like, what happened? Do you remember? Oh, I know. It was her birthday. Yes. Like, I just, I have this memory of, like, reading the book, and I just, I, in the last, like, four years, books make me cry, which, like, they never used to, but I just feel like now I'm at a place where, like, I'm, that books are kind of, like, the main media that I consume, so I just feel like I get immersed in them. But I just kind of remember they're, like, because I feel like at one point they had a falling out, 
because I think again Queenie was going through this trauma and just like I think just as a reflex she's like pushing people in her life away and I just I feel like I again it's been four years three or four years since I read the book but I feel like I have this memory of just there's like very sweet moment where like her friend is still showing up for her in that way and I just remember like crying and just being like it's so sweet like yeah I think it was and I think it was like at her birthday and I think her cousin did something similar to where her cousin like was gonna go out with friends but didn't and stayed and she was like it's your birthday I want to be with you and like Queenie had never like felt that she like she didn't have that like Tom didn't do that right like at one point Tom's like uncle said the n-word at like a family function and like Queenie obviously freaked out and Tom was like oh why do you have to like be so loud and like so angry or whatever and it's like he's not prioritizing her and like her cousin did and her friend Darcy did and like I even I think in that same like moment Queenie was able to realize like her mom is also a person just a girl like like living life you know and and I think that was like one of the last scenes was like her mom telling the story of her naming her Queenie she was originally going to name her princess because she was like the princess of the house or whatever but then when she met her and had gave birth to her she was like princess is too small of a word like she's amazing and strong so her mom knew from the beginning that she was so strong and powerful and then here's this girl who has been broken for 200 300 pages and her mom viewed her as powerful as this queen that she doesn't even see herself as this queen and her cousin and her friend are like you know also viewing her in that way and so it kind of felt like um like a full circle thing like I feel like she you know by the end of the book she was like not healed but she was on the way of becoming more secure and making better choices and seeing that people really did like her because I think even with Tom he had said when they were dating like you don't let me in like you cry alone like when you're feeling intense feelings like you don't let me in and it's like if she's doing that to Tom who's her boyfriend and she loved so much for a couple of years like she's not doing it with her friends either even when you know she had a miscarriage with Tom she didn't tell anyone that she had the miscarriage you know and she's sleeping with all these guys and she, I think, was telling her friends about some of them, but it just seems like she kept so much in. And then by the end of it, it's like when she allows that connection and people to prioritize her and make her take up space in their lives. Whereas, like, in the beginning, she really wasn't doing that with her friends, which is like like you're saying, like, obviously, this book is about, like, being Black, right? Like, it, that is a huge part of it, but it is so much of it just about being a woman, you know? And that is super relatable, <laughs> <laughs> like like you know the the seeing how powerful you are through your friends eyes I feel like we all have those moments of like we you know we think we're ugly we think we're losers or whatever we have these like negative feelings about ourselves and then we talk to our friends and they're like you're the hottest bitch I've ever seen <laughs> you're so smart you're hilarious you're so cool like what the fuck are you talking about like I feel like we all I feel like that's part of like girlhood is kind of speaking that power into your friends in the times when they're at their lowest and they don't see it themselves. And like I that's what Darcy agree. Yeah. And I think yeah. this book also like and I'll I feel like we both can relate cuz we've read some of the same authors. Like what I like so much about this book as like sad and traumatic but also as like resonating and kind of powerful as it was I think it sits in this nice middle ground of like there's like the Colleen Hoover books on one extreme end of the spectrum right that almost kind of like I don't know not dehumanizes women but like I think that's a different category that I don't even want to touch but then I feel like we have, for lack of a better word, you have like the Emily, I'm an Emily Henry, maybe I'm an Emily Henry fan. I think so. But like her books are like, they're always happy ending. And like, that's what her audience, like, that's what they know, right? They read her because she's been open about like, my books will always have a happy ending, which like, there are times when I'm in the mood for that. But I think that it makes both of those spectrums completely unrelatable because like, you know, the guy meets the girl in the end of the Henry book. And like, that's what, and this was kind of a middle ground for me to be like, you don't often read books that feel as real and as relatable. And I think that's why I was drawn to it so much because it just, it echoed 
so many themes of what it means to be a woman and kind of navigate life and relationships. And I just really thought that the author did a good job of bringing us in and then kind of resolving it in a way that didn't make you feel like, oh yeah, it's always the guy, right? The guy's always going to come through and like solve the problem. And I think that's yeah. what was was it for me because as somebody who typically reads romance, like you kind of always oh, it's so cute and like wrapped up and they live happily ever after with this like nice little bow. And I think that that was what was nice about this one was like, oh, like almost like kind of the cliche of like, she can save herself, you know? And I think as women, yeah. we know that, but I certainly don't always believe that. And I think that was just a cool, I really appreciated the author's perspective and the way that they were able to tell the story. Yeah, I I love that too. And I honestly, until you said it, it didn't like click like what you're saying because I, I saw it as like more of like a coming of age type of book, which I don't even know if that's correct, but that's like my perception of coming of age where it's like you start off in this like low, uh, sad point and then you get through it and you come out like stronger in the end. And you're right. Like there was no guy that did that. Like it was her. It was her and like she went to therapy and she – you know, her, her grandparents also came around eventually to, they let her move in and, um, you know, they didn't let her sit around and mope. They're like, there's stuff to clean. There's a garden to go <laughs> take care of. Like we have chores. Like you want to go to therapy? Like, fine, go to therapy. Um, they did come around to that eventually, but it's like, they were there for her in their way, just like her friends were there for her in that way. And like, you're right. It was, was not a guy that did it because to your point, like in, Colleen Hoover movie uh, TV show uh, books and Colleen <laughs> Hoover books um, she like infantilizes them where they're like weak and they stay weak where Queenie started and they're just like weak and you know low the whole time but this book she started in that spot and she got herself out of it through everyone around her yeah through her friends through her therapy through her grandparents and even her mom because she hated her mom and mm -hmm. her mom never hated her. Like, it no. was a very much one-sided thing. And I think even that was helpful in it. Like, do we wish that her mom was more maybe active and more forward and more, like, a participant in it? Like, maybe? Because I, I found that way. I'm like, lady, this is your kid. Like, I don't know, wake up a little bit. Like, help her or something. But I think her just being nice and being open and understanding of Queenie's position was, like, what led Queenie to be, like, oh, she's just like a, a woman going through life just like I am. And like, same thing with Darcy. Darcy's like, that's her best friend from work. It's like, you're going through something and I'm going to be there for you anyways. It was just so nice. And it wasn't a guy thing. It was her. It was Queenie and her friends and her support group. Like, I almost love that the guys were like the worst part of the story, yes. right? Like, I feel like every time she like engaged with somebody or slept with somebody new, I'm like, oh my goodness, like, this is not it. So I feel like as we talk about like, Yes, she went to therapy. Like, I love that going to therapy was normalized in this book because it's so, it is a resource. It's a tool that I think other books don't talk about. Like some other books yeah. that I read, it's just like, oh, everything happens to work out, right? Because I think that's the beauty of writing books. It's like, it's this level of escapism and everything can work out because the author says so. Like, that's yeah. totally fine. Like I subscribe to that often when I read books that like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. This is just going to happen. Even if it's like a gap in the plot line, like we're just going to be like, okay, I love that it was a fictional story, but like that called to light actual ways that people cope and actual ways that people work through trauma and actual ways that people build relationships. And it's not always easy. And I think a lot of that, like since becoming a mom, especially like I didn't read this book when I was a mom, but I feel like I have those thoughts all the time of like, this is your kid. Why are you not doing X, Y, Z? And I think since becoming a mom, I kind of realized that like some parents are just not, that's not a reality, right? Like, and I think yeah. that's, it's very hard for me to grapple with, but I think also there's this book probably called in a lot of people who were struggling with their relationship with their families. And I think that's like my rose colored glasses view of the world is that every parent that has a child loves that child unconditionally. And as I age and as I go through motherhood, I just, I'm more aware of the fact that that's not true. Like yeah. that's a choice and that's intentional. And I think as sad as it is, like, I'm glad that we aren't glossing over. I'm glad that there's a writer who's taking the chance to tell a story that still has a happy ending, even if it took multiple different 
bumps in the road to get there because I think that's just like that's how life is like yeah I don't know I really appreciated that and I'm also very excited to kind of see how that kind of portrays when they move it to the tv I know and it, it's it's funny I'm very excited for the tv show that's actually why I'm recording this so that I can release it on the 10th because the 7th is when the the tv show comes out and so that's why I wanted to do this and I'm curious if they're going to change anything from the book to the TV show, because I hope that they don't. And you know what this, this reminds me of? Have you seen Insecure with Issa Rae? No, I've only seen like one episode. I, first of all, I'm obsessed with it. You should definitely watch it. It's very funny because there are some similarities between Insecure and, and this, um, and this book. Uh, But I'm going to say that the main difference is that insecure seems like Issa Rae's character which I forget her name in the show but she is like a black woman like in black spaces I want to say 95% of the time I think it starts out with Issa Rae working at like a nonprofit, and it's like a predominantly white space but I do think that most of the show is Issa living in like her, her black culture whereas this book Queenie I think was Queenie being a black woman and in her small circle it was like black but like experiencing like the white world and different ways to go about it but i think that if you liked queenie's thing you'll like Issa rays because first of all it's more fun insecure is a lot more fun and light and like it does touch on like sad stuff um but i guess the only similarity is that it's like black women now that i'm saying that out loud <laughs> because i don't there's like not much trauma <laughs> happening in Issa rays and insecure and like Queenie is not that happy and I think it's just like black women I think that's the only similarity (laughs) but I think I think this is just a random plug to watch Insecure now that I think about it but but I think I I do want to touch it go back a little bit I do want to touch on how the therapist helped her navigate trauma because so many times she has so many like negative thoughts like she's about to start her job again they gave her like a leave of absence and when she goes to start her job again they she's like freaking out and saying she can't do it. But her her therapist says like, you aren't as alone as you think you are. And like, to me, I think that's what a therapist does, right? Because like, for example, if I talk to you, which we've talked about before, you know, you're married and you have a kid, right? And so not that you don't understand my experience, but like maybe I don't understand your experience, right? And so it's like, there's a difference. Whereas like with a therapist, like, their job is to be there for you and to like understand you so it's like you don't you really don't feel alone because they're like an expert in that way and it's funny because in the past few episodes I feel like I've been talking a lot about therapy and I'm like people I think people get the point I think I gotta like stop talking about therapy but then you're right like Queenie you know she goes to a therapist and she's on a like leave of absence of for like a couple months and like I think it was a huge part of the book. And so here's just another plug to tell everyone to go to therapy because it's important. <laughs> and I think people feel it's really unaccessible. Like, and I think yeah, it's important to like read books about it because I help. Mm-hmm. I feel like it helps make it more accessible to people who might not have that resource. Like I, I sought out therapy on my own and I think it's just, it's interesting to read books now as a mom, as a 30 something year old, as somebody who went through therapy, like I grew up not talking about it. Like my childhood, we we didn't talk about it. Right. Like, so I just, it, as we read more books and as people become more open about talking about it, like, which is one of the reasons why I like chiclet so much. Cause I feel like you're diving into topics that aren't, always talked about but I hope that they become an outlet for somebody who needs to hear you should go to therapy or they need to hear you know you are worthy and blah 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 like as again as sappy as that is like it's these resources are important because I just feel like if you grow up not talking about something you don't even know it exists you don't even know what it is yeah and I feel like you grow up and you're like why am I having all these feelings and it's like oh there's people that can like help you so all of that to say is like these kind of books and like experiences just help remind me that like hey nothing should be off the table as you like you know curate your relationships with your kids and everything um so I kind of appreciated that like that we're normalizing some of these topics that like you know 30 years ago 20 years ago it just kind of wasn't a thing 
Um, And I love that. Okay, cool. It's becoming a thing now too. And I love that people are reading about it and, you know, paying authors to read their books and the authors are writing their books. Yeah, I think that's a good point too, because I noticed that there are a lot of these TV shows like Insecure, America Ferreira's TV show, TV show, um, Ugly Betty. There's so many TV shows that focus on these taboo topics that do so well, and yet they're still underfunded. Like they're still like not being made at the same rates as like, other demographics even though they do so well and it's just like I was just thinking about this the other day it's like why is it so I mean we know why but it's like it's just a frustrating thing that it's like why does it have to be so hard when we know for a fact that they're gonna do well you know like that show um couples therapy yeah I think that I told you you know you remember I'm sure you've seen it on your own I'm obsessed with it it's like that's a really popular show it's like, why are we not having more therapist shows? Or why are we not having right. more shows about like finances and, and financial education and all these different important topics? I think a lot yeah. of it too is like people don't like to see, it's very interesting. So I don't watch TV often. My mom watches everything under the sun on primetime TV, which is very funny. But it's, I feel like it's this overarching, like people don't like to watch the str- the realistic struggles of women. Yeah. And I think especially women who aren't white, if I'm like, and I say that as a white woman, but so one of the shows that I really came to love was the show called Not Dead Yet. And it was with Gina Rodriguez, who I'm also a big fan of, um, loved Jane the Virgin. Um, But the show basically was that she could speak to ghosts and she was an obituary writer and she could speak to the ghosts of the person that she was writing the, the obituary on. But it, you know, one of the last episodes was like, she was thinking about freezing her eggs and that came up and her age and like where she was in her career. And again, like, as somebody who like essentially put her career on hold to like have my child, like it was a very resonating experience for me to be like, okay, like it's okay to struggle and feel like you don't know where your career is going to go or there is opportunity for you. And it got canceled after two seasons. So it was just one of those things that like, but on the flip side, like (laughs) we are seeing so many shows about like firefighters and like yeah team. and I'm like okay yeah. it just like it feels like an oversaturation in the media we have all these shows about like you know firefighters or like yeah. FBI agents like you know I you, how many how many movies can uh, Liam Neeson do where he's going <laughs> across the country to like save his daughter right there's like seven different movies about that but god forbid we talk about IVF and like therapy and divorce you know yeah it's, and it's I love that people keep trying, though. Like, I think yeah. that it helps, like, and when I watch your podcast and when I hear you're talking about stuff, I'm like, you keep talking about stuff because it matters, right? Like, sure, yeah. every episode we're going to say go to therapy, but, like, I think it matters to keep hearing that, even if it feels redundant. And I think it just, it'll be very interesting to see how Queenie does. And I think, because I believe Queenie's a Hulu release, so it's not even being released on primetime. So I'm hoping that that gives it a runway to, like, do better because it'll be streaming only there's so many shows and stories that I feel like need to be told and then they just don't get the opportunity to um so I'm excited I'm excited to kind of see I don't know that I've really I know the book to screen and stage is not a new concept I it's been a long time since I've seen honestly something like that uh, where I've actually intentionally read the book and then seen the show I honestly think the last thing that 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 I watched and this was years ago was the book The Fault in Our Stars which then became a movie and I was like so hyped to see the movie because of the book and I remember just being like the movie was not great like the book's always better oh um, I but that was, was book to movie yeah like I don't know that I've done book to show like I know you read and watched Little Fires Everywhere yeah um so I don't really know that I've done oh that's not true we did lessons in chemistry but again yeah I watched lessons in chemistry and was like this is not good the book was better <laughs> so I'm that's excited funny. to kind of check in with you when we start watching it to yeah. figure out like okay are we liking it are we not liking it is it the same <gasps> is it different we should watch it together we gotta yeah add it we to should. our list of things that we gotta do when our when our sleepover our sleepover is gonna be jam-packed <laughs> I love it I'm so excited <laughs> all these things that we have to do because we gotta jam it all in um but yeah, that's it. I know you have, you know, you have adulting things to do. Yeah. 
Um, well, this is so, so fun. Yeah, I'm glad you were able to join again. I'm excited to hang out when I'm in Jersey yeah. to celebrate your per- your birthday in person <laughs> um, and see your daughter. Hopefully she'll let me hug her. She'll get there. She'll get there. I she hope gave her so. music teacher a high five today. So okay, I think, we're I there. really think when she meets my nieces, that's when she'll like, cause she'll see them hug me and kiss me and stuff. And she'll be like, oh, we can hug her. Okay, cool. Like, I think, I, I think that'll work. But anyways, so I'll see you soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. And obviously I'll talk to you. Thanks. And I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.